What is going on, YouTube? Reverse John Sanic from Johnny Radio here, bringing you another top five on this glorious Top Five Friday. And guys, I'm so excited. We are getting through the 2010s, and we are now to the top five albums of 2011. Great year in music history. So much goodness to get to, so let's not waste any time at number five. Major Minor by Thrice. Yes, had to have this album in my list. And surprise, it wasn't higher actually on my list because there's so many amazing songs on this record from the one-two punch opener of Yellow Belly and Promises. Just amazing rockers. You know, Dustin Kendrew never sounded just more vitriolic on that opener, Yellow Belly. Just amazing. And then uh, Anthology is just, I think, the best song on that record. Amazing just kind of summary of what Thrice is. And then you have some amazing slow burn ballads that really build into something bit bigger like uh, Treading Paper, and Words in the Water, just amazing songwriting, amazing playing by the band. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite records by them, and that's just my number five. So now at number four. Milo Ziloto by Coldplay. Yes, you got to have this on your list as well. I mean, just an amazing, you know, coming off the heights of Viva La Vida, which is one of my absolute favorite records by them. This kind of continued in that vein of alternative pop, but leaning a little more into the pop, even doing a collaboration with Rihanna on Princess of China, which is an amazing song, so good. And then you have just oh, that big hit, Paradise, that everybody loves and sings along, along to. You got Charlie Brown, which I think is one of their best guitar riffs ever. I mean, just amazing what Johnny Buckland does on that track. Uh, you've got songs like Major Minus that is just uh, really one of their best rockers uh, to come out of this uh, kind of new era. And I mean, everything in between. I mean, there's just so many great songs on this record. Not really a weak link on it, and uh, yeah, it's only my number four. So now at number three, God's Green Earth. Yes, uh, this is, a, a, again, I have to give up myself a little bit of a pat on the back on this one, but most of the credit goes to Donovan Cox, my partner in crime, who just did an amazing job uh, writing most of these songs, producing all of it, playing most of the instruments. Uh, like I've said on my top five songs of 2011, Breakfast in Bed is all him and it's brilliant. I think that's the best track on here. But then you've got some other great uh, cuts like Jupiter and Beyond and Traveler, which I have vocal duties on. So if you haven't checked it out, please do yourself a favor and check out this 10 uh, track album that um, I still think is, is one of the best things I ever had just the privilege of being a part of at the time. And uh, we got to even open up for one of our uh, big influences, the Life and Times, when they came to play at the Masquerade in Atlanta, the high water mark of God's Green Earth's career, uh, short lived, but uh, man, what a blast. And yeah, have to give a shout out to one of my former bands on here. And that's just my number three. So now at number two. I, I love the colorful clothes you wear. The Smile Sessions by The Beach Boys. Yep, gotta have it on here, even though like it's almost a cheat in my mind because I know I had Smile from Brian Wilson on my, uh, I guess it was 2004 top five. And I actually like that version a little better, even though, you know, it's not quite the Beach Boys, but it's it's pretty darn close. And Brian Wilson's vocals still just there. But uh, amazing that they were able to salvage so much of the original material from the 60s that you got to mention it again, man. It's just one of the most incredible albums ever produced, whether it never got finished in the 60s or you're listening to it, the remnants of it now, uh, it just never gets old from heroes and villains to, of course, the amazing closer, good vibrations, uh, and just everything in between the whole journey, you know, from uh, vegetables and all these kind of cute, fun songs uh, to Blue Hawaii and then the craziness of Mrs. O'Leary's Cow. I mean, 
just amazing and from a production standpoint uh what they were doing in the 60s it really did rival anything that the beatles were doing and at the same time very much uh influencing the beatles at the time so yeah gotta have this on your list man it is just a treasure uh no matter how many versions of it there are and that's just my number two so now at number one El Camino by the Black Keys. Yes, man. At the height of their fame off of, uh, right off of the heels of Brothers, which is my favorite uh, Black Keys album. This one is a close second, man. It is just, it's so compact and full of just these amazing upbeat rockers. You got Lonely Boy, just an amazing start to the album, Dead and Gone, Gold on the Ceiling, and just the the excitement doesn't let up. Even gems like Run Right Back with that, just such a cool guitar riff by Dan Auerbach, that bam, 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 and the grooves, man. These guys, uh, just amazing. I, unfortunately, I don't think that their new material quite hits as hard as this did in, in their peak here. But, oh my God, songs like Little Black Submarines, the way that it builds, and just the songwriting is uh, just some of the best work that they've ever done. Um, and yeah, you got to have this at the top of your list. So let me know, guys, what you think of my top five. Let me know how yours would be. If you're so bold, leave me a top ten. And uh, let me know if I went wrong, because I, I always love to hear that as well. But guys, we got top fives every Friday, album reviews, so much more. Thank you for watching. And as always, Viva La Vinyl. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and be sure to ring the bell for notifications so you can always see great quality content like you're seeing on the screen right now. Thank you so much for supporting Johnny Radio, and I'll see you soon.